what we tend to not understand is that time really doesn't exist. Clocks exist. Big time mainstream quantum physicists and theoretical physicists are admitting that this is true now. We've been given this functional arrow of time, which puts us in one specific direction so that we can organize our thoughts and our days and our years and weeks and what we're going to do and what we're going to meet up with somebody and everything else. So we have this ability to coordinate and collaborate with each other. However, if you understand that time is also an illusion, it's something that you can use as a tool, but if you also understand that it's an illusion, then you can actually master time and you can maximize what you're doing on this planet. Because if you go in all the higher dimensions, you know, we're in the third. So if you draw a line on a piece of paper, that's the first dimension. If you then connect those lines and, and uh, create a house on a piece of paper, that's a two dimensional structure, or you can move it into a computer. Anything you see in a computer that looks 3D is actually 2D. And because we're in the third, we can see down into 2D. We can see all the way down, obviously, into 1D, and we can manipulate those dimensions from our higher selves. Now, there are beings in fourth, fifth, and sixth dimensions. There's people above us. Because of that, they see us, and they recognize the past, present, and future operating all at the same time. Everything's happening at once. There is no separation between the past, present, and the future. The arrow doesn't exist. Because they're higher than us, they can look down into the third, and they can see into what we're doing. The fourth dimension is something called a tesseract. If you go into the ancient text, it's Metatron's cube. Meta, M-E-T-A, metaverse, right? They got that from Metatron's cube. Now this fourth dimension is really something called a quasi-crystal. And this quasi-crystal in the fourth dimension, it casts a shadow. And the shadow that it casts, it creates the realm that we're living in here. We're living in a shadow of a higher dimension. That shadow creates a third dimension. It actually creates a fractal of it, creates this fractal holographic matrix that we're actually maneuvering in in the third dimension right now. You can address a fourth dimension of time like Albert Einstein was saying if you're just looking at a third plus a fourth being the arrow. But when you actually move up into another dimension, we now know in quantum physics that there is actually a fourth dimension. So all dimensions are in 90 degree angles of each other. And according to uh, quantum theory right now, we're really anticipating that there's at least 11 dimensions or otherwise the universe would collapse. So there really is truly a fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, all the way up, not just the arrow of time. That's just something extra. I believe personally, just based off of my research, and I've gone through now over a thousand scriptures, texts, papyruses, cuneiform tablets from all over the world. They all have a very similar story. Mm -hmm. All these uh, ancient civilizations talk about beings, not just beings who came here from other planets, people that look like us, not identical, but very similar. In other words, a bilateral bipedal hominid of some type that can maneuver around, that has appendages that can manipulate the environment, because without that, you can't move out into space and other places. And they also talk about multidimensional. You get into like the Nag Hammadi and stuff like that. You're talking about multidimensional beings. And so in physics, in quantum physics in particular, they started theorizing on these dimensions and were able to even analyze and discover some that they actually do exist. And on top of that, they realized that the dimensions are stacked, so packed so tight on top of one another that if you can phase shift your atomic structure, your subatomic frequency, you can walk right into another dimension. And so they started postulating, what if beings from higher dimensions are some of these apparitions and these paranormal phenomena that we're seeing, are they able to maybe take a glimpse or a peek? Are they phasing through into our uh, universe? And so they started really theorizing it. It seems to be, and based on my research, that there's people living everywhere. Not just, and I'm talking about little green men with antenna, I think that there's people living all throughout this universe in the third dimension, and I think there's people living all throughout even higher multiple dimensions, maybe at a certain level or a certain height in those dimensions. Maybe they don't have a real corporeal body, you know what I'm saying? But I believe that the consciousness is there. There's a trinary star system that we know of called Sirius, the Sirius star system, A, mm -hmm. B, and C. B is a failed star, in other words, it ran out of fuel, turned into a white dwarf. These beings were orbiting on a, a planet that orbited that star, according to the Dogon, not me came here, they're called the Nomo, the Dogon called them the Nomo, taught them all about the star system, the orbital pattern, our entire solar system, the names, the shapes, the sizes, the colors of all the planets in our solar system, all the planetary alignments, and they even knew that white dwarf star was so gravitationally heavy that one spoonful couldn't be lifted by over one million men. 
They even knew that. We learned that in quantum mechanics and quantum physics right. in the 1970s, 1980s. You know, we hypothesized it. And obviously we couldn't even see that star until the 1980s. And Professor James S. Gates, who used to be the, um, the science advisor for Obama when he was in office, he's now the professor, I believe, at the University of Maryland uh, in uh, supersymmetry and theoretical physics. He rediscovered him, obviously. And he took, turned him into three-dimensional objects. And then from there, he found the error correcting codes. He was analyzing and accessing information about the ether of space-time. And he discovered that the entire ether, in other words, everything this soup that we're operating in without the, throughout the entire universe, is running on a specific code. It's called an Adinkra code. It's called error correcting codes. The same exact kind of codes that run search engines and web browsers. That's what's running the universe. One thing people don't understand is that well, everything in the third dimension is made of light. And so we are light and light is us. We know that the illusion of this avatar body and this chair I'm sitting on and the table that you're sitting at, what is this? This is slow down light waves. Mm -hmm. When you slow light down and the consciousness interacts with it, it collapses it into what we call solid matter. So solid matter is actually an illusion. Right. For example, the only thing stopping my hand from going through this chair is the repulsion of the electromagnetic frequencies. I don't actually touch the chair. And so if I can phase shift the atomic frequency of my hand to match the same frequency of the atoms in this chair, I pass my hand right through it because atoms are 99.999% empty space. Because of that, we're a fractal. We have consciousness, which is also light. A fractal is when you take, for example, if you look at a, a hologram and you go to one part of the hologram, one tiny piece and look at it, you'll see the entire image in that smallest piece. The only uh, thing yeah. you lose is a little bit of resolution. And so it's important for people to understand that this entire realm is a fractal of a whole. We're a fractal of the universe and our consciousness, even though it's one consciousness, it's also a fractal of main master consciousness. And it's really incredible that every thought that you think in your skull, it leaves your skull as a form of a light wave. Every time you think, we know this because we can put a cap on your head and a laboratory, put a little electrodes on it, sensors, and tell you to think about something, and it's going to show up on the computer screen mm -hmm. because the computer's reading the light waves coming out of your skull. We can't see those waves because we can only see 1% of the light spectrum as human beings. We're limited. We don't see gamma rays. We don't see ultraviolet. We have this power of thought, which you have an ability to even travel through light with leaving your mind and traveling light. Ability to even travel through light with leaving your mind and traveling light. You can actually connect to other realms, other dimensions through conscious thought. Quantum entangling your light waves with other light waves that exist in the universe, not only in the third dimension, but even multiple dimensions. Your mind can entangle with somebody on the other side of the universe. A lot of the times, you know, you can say, oh, I came up with this great idea, but you really didn't. You right. just downloaded that idea because you entangled with the information. Big time mainstream quantum physicists and theoretical physicists are admitting that this is true now. It's not woo woo science no more. This is like what you're getting taught in university. When I was at MIT, studying applied neuroscience, one of the things we learned about was this exact thing. The fact that not only can you walk in a room like you were saying earlier and you can uh, sense the vibe and you can actually transmit negative or positive energy mm -hmm. to somebody. If somebody's at a, at a low frequency and you walk in positive and high frequency enough, your light being can actually raise their energy level. Right. And if you're not high enough and, and they're low, they right. can actually drop your energy level. Right. It depends on how strong you are consciously. And then also we talked about the fact that we can entangle with information throughout the entire multiverse. And if you're able to discern that information, if you can put the action behind it, it could be one of the greatest inventions. It could be Web3, it could be NFTs or whatever. All this stuff comes from other places. A lot of the male in, in this society right now, they're being emasculated, you know, and a lot of it's, it's chemical based. Chemical castration, man, it's, it's all these microplastics. You know, we're, we're inhaling them, it's in the food, it's in everything. They did a test on those microplastics. They were converting frogs in male frogs into women. This is just crazy stuff. So the testosterone levels in men are the lowest it's been since they've been recording. And the ability for people to make a lot of logical decisions right. is also dropping.